Some of you may have heard about the recent news here in Japan. Tokyo Medical University was caught manipulating entrance exam scores in order to keep the total percentage of female students below 30%. What the investigation found was that they added extra points to every male student's exam except men who had already failed the test multiple times previously. This is after they were already caught last month accepting bribes in order to grant admission to the children of prominent figures, which they also did by boosting their scores. It's been suggested this is a widespread practice, and now the education minister plans on investigating all medical schools in Japan. The reason given for why this happened in the first place is that women quit their jobs sooner than men in order to start families and raise children. There is currently a shortage of doctors in Japan, but this has also been going on for at least 10 years, and many suspect even longer than that. Understandably, a lot of people are really outraged about this here right now. After the news broke, the hashtag which means it's okay for us to be angry about sexism toward women, trended on Twitter, where Japanese women spoke out against this issue and shared their own stories of discrimination they've faced throughout their lives. So today I'm going to be using this video to translate some of their stories and get their voices out to a wider audience across the world. I've been working as a teacher continuously for 20 years. When my department changed, the new head was male, and he said to me, if you haven't given birth or gotten married, then you're not complete and you shouldn't be a teacher. I'll never in my life forget that, but I'm living every day happy and smiling. I'll never in my life forgive him. I was told the same thing by the president of the company I used to work for. You're not married, you're not complete, you don't have the right to give your opinion, so just follow my orders. It's been more than a decade and I still can't forget it. I'm working as a nurse, and when I was doing job hunting, I was told the same thing by the head of the hospital at my interview. In my case, I think the head meant societally too. He even said things like, I don't deserve social security benefits. I thought he was terminally stupid. I also can't forget it. I'm a man, but I've been told something similar by a lot of people, since I'm a middle-aged man who's not married. Acquaintances my age told me I'm defective as a human, and I should grovel for forgiveness in front of my parents' grave. The people who said these things have probably forgotten. I was a midwife at an obstetrics and gynecology clinic, and 30 minutes before I was about to take leave for my fourth pregnancy, the director called me in and fired me. He's able to earn a living because of women giving birth, and he still treated me like this. I had been working at this company for a while when I got pregnant with my second son. When I told them I was pregnant, they called me into the president's office and he smoked in front of me and sighed. When I reached eight months pregnant, my boss called me into the conference room. He said that until I wrote a letter of resignation, I couldn't go home. I kept sitting there while they endlessly hounded me. My physical condition wasn't great, and half in tears I wrote my resignation. All of a sudden I was jobless. From that day I became aware of the thinly veiled sexism toward women here, and I've lost all hope. In the past, my last interview with a former state-owned traffic company's board member. So, in the future you'll get married. I don't know about that. You absolutely will. And then you'll quit, right? I won't quit. What if we order you to relocate to a different branch? Of course I'll go. But then what about your husband? I'll make sure to marry someone who understands. I don't think you're being realistic. We could visit each other on the weekends. Sounds like wishful thinking. What if you get pregnant? I'll use the maternity leave system. You don't get to decide that. When he said, this is a man's company, the woman's job is to give priority to the men. I just felt completely dejected. When I was job hunting, in an interview with a real estate company president, the first thing he said was, hmm, I think this job is too tough for women. You want to get married and have kids, right? He didn't ask me anything job related. As expected, I didn't get the job. I will never buy a house from that company. When I was job hunting, the interviewer said to me, we don't give managerial spots to women. This other job is more suited for women. Apply for that. And when I entered the job and let them know my desired department, they said, that job's too tough for women. At the next consultation, ask me for a department more suited toward women, okay? The industry where I work is mostly male, and sexist remarks toward women are an everyday occurrence. I got tired of expressing my indignation, and to protect myself, I started to ignore it. But I shouldn't do that. From now on, women in this industry shouldn't have to go through the things I did or lose their opportunities because of this. This story is a little off the subject, but at night on the train, a man stared continuously at me, followed me through my transfer, and then off at the next station, and then into a combini. I was scared, so I ran to a police box, and they said, 
It's your fault for wearing something so revealing. At that moment, the scariest thing to me was the police. I'm a software engineer. In the past, my male boss told me I was pretty good with technology for a woman. He meant it as a compliment, but all I could say was, yeah. Even now when I remember it, I get angry. 20 years ago in driving school, my elderly instructor said, you're a woman, but you want a license? Even now, I can never forget that. I'll join the protest. My mother was told girls don't need an education, so she gave up on going to university. I went to university, but I ended up giving in to that idea too. I don't want my daughter to go through this too. I want to create a society for my daughter where she can seize her future through her own power. My parents told me girls don't need an education. To prove them wrong, I succeeded in entering the highest ranked university in Japan. When I applied for jobs, I was told, if you were a man, we would have hired you instantly. My enemy wasn't just my parents. It was all of society. I have a typical domineering husband, and when my mother-in-law came to live with us, he just got worse. All I could do was make sure my son doesn't turn out this way, so at mealtimes I would make him set the table and clean up the dishes afterward. But then my mother-in-law would say, it's fine, leave it, and do it all herself. Gradually my son stopped doing anything at all. This is the worst. I wonder if men understand the frustration of home economics being a woman's only required class. In high school while the girls were taking home ec, the boys were studying math and physics. It's not that I hate home ec, but it's frustrating. That was when I first experienced sexism. One reply said, in middle school, girls took home ec and boys took technology. It was extremely frustrating. And another person replied with a quote from Japanese Wikipedia pages on home economics. Originally in middle school, technology and home ec was supposed to be taught together for boys and girls under industrial arts. But under the table, the home economics teaching staff organization manipulated it so that boys and girls would be taught technology and home ec respectively. And then in high school, it was originally supposed to be an elective for both boys and girls, but they once again petitioned repeatedly until it became mandatory for just girls. Looking it up on Wikipedia myself, it seems like these days it has gone back to the original plan of boys and girls taking classes together, and home ec is now required for boys too. But for many years, the classes were separated and mandatory only for girls. Even today in my hometown, when someone gives birth to a girl, they congratulate them. I say curse by saying, Oh good, she'll be helpful around the house. Don't say things to make these newborn girls want to die already. My seven-year-old daughter's dreams are infinite. She thinks she can be a doctor and an idol and taiyaki stall owner and pet groomer and astronaut and pastry chef all at once. I thought as her parent, all I could do was watch over her, but I have to do more. Before she grows up, this era of discrimination against women needs to end. In my middle school class election, I received the most votes, but because I was a girl, they made me vice president. They gave the president spot to the boy who got fewer votes than me. The first time I was aware of the differences between boys and girls, I was in elementary school. My dad and grandpa liked collecting antiques and used to show them to my little brother. Among them was a pocket watch I really liked, so I said, when I grow up, can I have it? I was told that when I grow up, I'll get married, so I can't have it. All of my grandpa's things would go to my little brother. I didn't understand at the time why I couldn't get anything because I was going to get married. But in my childlike mind, I felt that my little brother was good, and I was bad. That kind of mindset has to stop. In reality, I did get married, but I never perceived it as being married off or joining a different house. All I did was start a new family with my husband. So, Grandpa, give me your pocket watch. When I was in my fifth year doing club activities, an outside lecturer man ordered me to stay alone and clean up since I was a woman, and then go home. I didn't understand it at all. If it happened now, I'd be pissed and argue back. When my daughter was in middle school, she told me, Mom, I think it would have been better for you if I was never born. We don't just have declining birth rates. We will have no more children at all. This discrimination against women is slowly killing Japan. Take note. When I was a kid, I was told countless times by my teachers and other adults, it would have been great if you were a man. In university, I was asked, you're just going to get married soon, so why do you want to go to university? Side note, I'm still single today. No matter how hard I tried, even if I got a full 100 points, I'm just told, but you're still a woman. This incident pierces through the lie that men are of higher ability than women. They knew women were capable and hid it. And when they were found out, their excuse was, but women get married and have kids. Men don't get married? Men don't have kids? 
This is the result of a society where marriage and pregnancy responsibilities are solely the duty of women. Since a long time ago, I've always been angrier than everyone else about these things, but I was always the only one. Let's finally be angry together. Whenever a problem comes up, people say, it was worse back in my day, or it's always been like this, or it's worse in other countries. All I can say is, so what? Don't try to trivialize the problems we're facing with worthless comparisons like that. The president at my company, a woman I know well, used to study economics. At that time, the university staff told her, they lower entrance exam scores for women. Every place does. Because women aren't capable of innovating, you know? Ten years later, she still remembers it word for word. In the mid-80s, we women were given different starting salaries than men, and that's when I first learned about sexism. My friend said, we took the same exam as men and passed the same standards. We're in the same university, right? So then why is there discrimination like this in job hunting? And now, 35 years later, I never thought it would be revealed that we weren't in fact clearing the same standards. We were clearing higher ones. Looking at the timeline and seeing all these supportive messages from foreigners is making me cry. Over here, this topic is only generating criticism and debate. Until now, I hadn't seen many comments from people supporting us without hesitation. But there have been some stories of men commenting in support of women, and I've collected some of those comments to share as well. Because women have kids and have to raise children, and thus cause a gap in the workplace, you'd rather hire men? Well, there's a gap in child rearing by most Japanese men. The only reason women have to sacrifice their jobs is because they're covering for your lack of help. We men need to start browsing this tag too. There are times where we're not consciously trying to discriminate, but we do it anyway. There's a lot of discrimination we don't notice. Not knowing isn't itself a fault. Of course, men like me can also be angry about this fucking sexism for the treasured people and children in our lives. A society where only women are angry about sexism toward women is awful. Instead, we should not be quiet and we should show our support with the hashtag, we men need to be angry about sexism toward women. Five years ago, I made a video about gender equality in Japan where I explained a lot of these issues in detail. And unfortunately, not much has changed since then. It's true that a lot of women leave their jobs when they get pregnant. But 66% of Japanese women want to continue working after childbirth or return to their work when their child grows up. A huge reason they don't is they have little choice since daycares are scarce and men haven't traditionally helped much with childcare. Men spend an average of 74 minutes a day doing housework and helping with childcare compared to 440 minutes for women or 7.3 hours. Five years ago, I said 25,000 children were on wait lists to get into a daycare. As of last year, it was 26,000. Last year, Japan reached a record high of Japanese men taking paternity leave at a whopping 5.14%. So even if women want to continue working, it's often impossible. We saw many comments earlier of women being forcefully resigned during their pregnancies. And of the 20% of Japanese men who even admitted they'd like to take paternity leave, many of them felt like the environment at their workplace discouraged it. And as we saw women talking about earlier, it's difficult for women to obtain careers with the prospect of promotion. Only 8.7% of section managers and higher level positions are women. Last year, Nissan made news when it achieved its goal of 10% female managers. The Global Gender Gap Report of 2017, which measures gender gaps in every country by numerous criteria, including economic participation, educational attainment, health and political empowerment, ranks Japan at 114th primarily due to a lack of women in higher management and governmental positions. But enough about statistics. Jun, as a Japanese man, what do you think? And about Tokyo Medical University thing, I heard one of the excuses is that they have a right to choose, right? Mm. But if they have a right to choose, I think we also have a right to choose too. And I don't think they're being fair at all, especially about score. And they should say that before the test. And as much as it felt bad for these uh, male, female students who can enter this college because they're just because they're women. I feel bad for them, but I also feel bad for the students who are in the college right now because they have been studying really hard to get into college and they try to help people. They're trying to save people's lives. And after they graduate, people might think, oh, you're from this college. Like another prejudice where discrimination might happen. This is just a vicious cycle. That's just really not, it doesn't make any sense to me. And I, actually, I felt really bad for women and just everyone who are involved in this in general. That was horrible. Well, on top of that, they've been boosting scores for children of like prominent officials or alumni children. 
So even if they weren't able to pass the test, they're putting them through medical school anyway it's not with even, less knowledge than they should know. It's not about feminism or anything. It's just like common sense <laughs> to me. For in the first place, obviously, I'm not a woman or I'll never be a mother. So I don't think I can truly understand what it's like to go through things like we just share on this in this video right now. Um, but I can imagine, and if you can imagine, I think you can be considerate before you say really rude things or like really, really sad things. I will put the hashtag down in the description box if you want to scroll through it and read more of Japanese women's stories. And if you want to show your support, I will also put a sentence you can use, which would just be your country's name in English is fine or whatever language and then say kara onshitemasu, which means I'm supporting you from this country. Uh, and then you can respond to Japanese women's tweets with that to show them that everyone around the world is thinking about them. By the way, it's lunchtime, and because I'm a man, I'm gonna cook you lunch now. <laughs> okay. See you guys later. Bye. Bye.